Du, 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 du. Tech by Tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. This is video number two in the series about uh, using our virtual NAS as a home theater PC uh, system that will manage and uh, acquire content and keep it organized in your home network so then you can uh, use that content to either you know watch TV movies read books or listen to music and uh, in this video we're going to focus on configuring the basics of our virtual NAS so that we can then start building up on that with the installation of the open source applications in in this video first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, configure the NFS and Samba services so that we can actually access our files from our network if necessary. And additionally, we are going to um, remove any unnecessary applications that come pre-installed in the NAS. In this case, specifically, we're going to remove Surveillance Station because we don't want to use it for our purpose in this series. And after that, then we are going to um, install Docker because we need the Docker application running in our NAS so that we can run our open source applications within Docker. And finally, after that, we're going to set up the base file structure for our system. And that should be all. That should get us uh, ready to start working then on the next videos with the actual applications that we're going to install. I hope you like this video and I hope you like this series. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Let's get to it. Let's have fun. Thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, and share. Uh, that'll help the channel if you find it useful. So thank you very much. All right, so we have installed DSM in our virtual NAS. Everything looks good. And first of all, let's do some cleanup here. I don't want this in here. So right click and remove. And uh, let's look at our storage manager for a second. For this VM, I've updated, updated the disks. It now has two 500 gigs disk space. Um, so we can have enough space to do the testing and show what we were discussing. So everything's good. Our volume is working. So there are some things that we need to figure out what we're going to do uh, for our NAS in our network. So the first thing, um, I'm going into the control panel and I'm going to go into file services. We need to identify what kind of services we want to provide on our network from the NAS. So uh, as we can see here, Samba is already enabled on our work group. Um, if you want to keep the transfer log, you can enable that. I don't need that, so I uncheck that. Um, for the rest, we just leave it like it is. Uh, AFP, that's for Apple devices. It's a type of uh, sharing for Apple, but I'm not going to enable it. Usually with Samba and NFS is more than enough. If you want to use NFS um, to, to share your um, files over the network, you can just come here and enable it and then select the version that you want. The latest is 4.1. Um, and yeah, basically that's more than enough for regular home usage. So the rest of the things we don't really have to uh, make changes to. So now that we have Samba working and NFS enabled, then we can apply these changes down here. All right, so now the changes have been applied and we have those services to uh, share our uh, files over the network. Now, if we go here into shared folders, mm, there's only the default surveillance folder that is created by Synology when uh, you set up the system, especially with the DVA 1622, which is more of a device for um, surveillance and uh, AI processing of the video. So that's why you always have this one created by default. It doesn't have anything right now. If we go into the info center, we're gonna see details about the device, you know, the serial number that was assigned, the version that it's running, the name of it, and things like that, like the CPU information. And then as you can see, the CPU info um, plugin that we added 
to uh, the automated red pill loader updated this information to show the actual CPU that we have and it gives you details there properly so that's working nice so that's mainly the, the the first thing that we wanted to do was just make sure that we enable the file services that we're going to use now um the next thing that i want to show is if we come here here's the surveillance station program that i mentioned that is installed by default um if you don't need it you can always uh just re exit out of there and go into the package center and go into the installed packages and you can select it and uninstall in the case that you don't need it so in this case i'm going to uninstall it because there's, there's really no no need for that for what we're going to do in any case we can always in, uh, reinstall it later so let's just make sure that's gone we don't have anything uh, occupying extra cpu memory and disk if it's not necessary And by doing this, it should also clear the share that we had uh, before. So if we go into shared folders, now we don't have the surveillance folder. We're back to a brand new clean um, instance. Now, an important thing that we have to do now is we go into the package center. And in here we go into the, um, let me update all this first. We are going into the all packages whenever this is done. All right, let's wait for this thing. It's uh, deciding to take its sweet time. Okay, there we go. Now we can go into all packages and we're going to look for the Docker package. So we scroll down until we see Docker. Here it is, you see the little whale here with the containers, and we just click install. Why? We're gonna run this the open source applications inside Docker containers. Docker containers are very uh, useful for, for many reasons, right? Uh, first of all, it's we, we don't waste resources because they're very tiny, they only have all that they need to work. But the important thing is that it, it provides isolation too. If we were running this directly on the machine, installing the, the applications and their dependencies, it, it gets kind of cumbersome to manage after a while because you have too many things going on. And the, the, uh, the only way I can say it is like the system gets dirty after a while. Even if you try to clean it up, it's not going to clean up proper, properly. So it's better to have a container because everything is inside that container. If you don't need it, you just delete it and it, everything gets rid. You know, it gets rid of everything and uh, you don't have to worry about having things that you don't need. So now that we have installed Docker, we go here and we right click on it and we say add to desktop. So we have access to the Docker application easier here. Okay, now we have Docker installed, but um, there are some things we need to do first too. We need to set up a file structure. Installing Docker should have created another folder, which is the Docker folder. Um, and all of the applications are gonna have a folder or a location where their configuration files are gonna be stored. You want those configuration files stored outside of the container so that if you have to rebuild the container or whatever, your configuration is untouched and it works the same way so what we're going to do is inside that docker folder we're going to create another one that is going to be called configs so now we have a configs folder inside the docker um, folder inside our nest perfect now there's some other things we need to do so let's go into the shared folder here in the control panel and we need to create some folders that we're going to share let's say first of all that we are going to create a file structure for our applications so we're going to go here and create a folder shared folder 
and we're gonna name it something like downloads I'm just gonna give you numbers that are like I mean names that are like standard for how you set up these type of applications so it's easier for you to kind of follow along and it makes more sense right so this is the Okay, the downloads for all the media applications. We're gonna use that volume that we have created. We don't need the recycle bin. And we're basically good like this. We go next. We don't need to encrypt it. We go next. We don't need to specify any of this. We go next. And that's a basic confirmation and we go next. So now we should have a new uh, folder that um, was created now it says that we have to assign permissions for um, this um, users if you have any user that we're gonna use it could be the guest could be admin could be your own user um, so you would grant them access here so for example if we want to uh, grant access to the guest user I would then go here on the uh, on the row that belongs to the guest and then I would say okay the guest has read only access to that and let's say my user I'm gonna give it read and write right the admin user usually I for forbid any access to it because it is a very uh, privileged user and I don't want anybody to use that so but you can give it read write if you want so with that we apply and now our new folder should have the appropriate permissions and it should be good to go so besides this downloads folder we are going to create a new shared folder and we're going to name this one like media and this is going to contain our media files after processing by the applications we disable the uh, recycle bin and we do the same thing next 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 and when we get to the permissions we can do the same thing and apply so now we have our media folder and our downloads folder and inside the docker folder we have our configuration folder um, basically that's the main uh, three folders that we need to create so once we have that we can just go into file station and then we're going to create some subfolders that are necessary okay so here for example in the docker configs we go inside it and we are here going to be creating folders for each application to hold our information our configuration files within downloads we're going to create a structure of folders that follows this pattern we create a folder this is going to be called completed we create another folder that's going to be called incomplete ncb another one is going to be called incomplete torrents and another one that is going to be called torrents ncbs so now we have four folders in the top of our structure and we're going to be referring to those in the future so after that then on the media uh, directory we're going to create other folders where we're going to store our files once they're finally processed by the applications right and it will generally generally be something like this like for example if you like anime you would have a folder for your anime if you like uh books you will have another folder for your books if you like uh, comics you will also have another folder for your comics let's say um, for your movies if you want to uh, download movies or if you already have movies and you want to rip them and put them in there and uh, we can do the same thing for TV so basically like stuff like that uh, you would create a folder for each category of content that you will have in your NAS and that basically is the main um, directory structure that we have to create media with the categories downloads with the four folders 
then have the status of the um, downloads and a folder to locate or, or put torrents and NZBs. We'll go about what those are later. And um, the configuration folder for our applications. So we have that done. And uh, we're basically ready for us to start configuring the NAS and the applications to start uh, managing our media.